So today we're going to look at the 5-3 Niagara systems and attempt to fix some of the warnings that have crept their way in from 5-1 to 5-3. And the one that triggered me was this one on screen, this uh, FX allow GP sorting uh, thread. This one, uh, this one was a bit confusing. It doesn't really tell you how to adjust or, or correct it. Um, so we're going to walk through that, and as we do, we're going to find some other errors in Niagara, and we're going to fix those as well. Okay, to track down where the issue is being originated from, uh, we start with our gameplay ability spawn effect. And what spawn effect does is right here, it applies a gameplay effect to your character. This gameplay effect called spawn in. So this is happening here and there's some other things it's doing, but this is the start of the visual representation of spawning in. That gameplay effect basically applies this gameplay Q tag called character spawn um, on, the, on the character, which is in turn being listened to here on this uh, gameplay queue right here. So the game triggers this spawn effect, which applies this effect, which adds this queue, which triggers this logic. And in this logic, it's picking randomly between two different Niagara systems to spawn, the spawn in and spawn in two. And so if you follow that logic, you end up with these two uh, spawn effects. So you have the spawn in effect one and the spawn in effect two. So we're going to look at the character spawning and you'll note these triangles indicating that there are at least warnings on these two emitters. So if you click on this emitter, you're going to see um, this message that the emitter is GPU and is using dynamic bounds mode. Please update the emitter or systems to bounds. So it's missing fixed bounds. So whenever the system is using the GPU, so here our SIM target is GPU, it can't have a dynamic bound. The bounds need to be fixed. And when you change this to fixed, it's going to give you the fixed bounds and basically everything outside of that fixed bounds gets called um, so that you're not using the GPU to, to to render things infinitely. So by clicking on that one, you're going to uh, the easiest fix is you change your calculation bond from dynamic to fixed. And you'll note that the fixed bounds window pops up. And then you can use this bound that fixed bound to the admitter, and it will update these values to be the range that that admitter is, is working in. So that's a quick fix for that particular error message that you're gonna see. And if I do it, let's enable this one. I think it has the same problem. Yeah, GPU and dynamic. So we're gonna make that fixed. And then we're going to set the fixed bounds to be the range. This one we're going to turn back off. Today I have it on. All right, and there are some other error messages. So let's look at this one, the emitter spawn. And if you click on that, it's going to say that the object that you're using, the skeletal mesh, needs access to the CPU. So we can go ahead and fix that as well. Then we repeat that across all the different areas where we have that GPU bounding problem. So here we see it again. We can, sorry, switch it from dynamic to fixed. 
and then use the bounds to automatically update the bound. And now that error has gone away. So we repeat that for all of the particle effects. The other major change that happened in 5.3 is the depreciation of the initialized particle and it being replaced with a V2. So you see here in the log that initialized particle is depreciated and it is now a new initialized particle called V2. And what that means is this one right here, this initialized particle will give you this message. And the easiest one is to use this recommendation to disable and backup. So if you watch here, you'll see a second initialize occur when I do this. And you'll see that it kept the old initialize here and disabled it and then created this new initialization. Now that also generated a couple of other error messages here. And these error messages are the fact that in the original, these were exposed as inputs. So you see that these are exposed as inputs. That is no longer an option for those values in the new initialize. And so the Correction for that is to remove the input. Now you do need to double check that you don't actually need those inputs. Um, on this particular one, you don't, but obviously before you do this change, if you were actually using those inputs, um, you'd need to make sure that you made the adjustments necessary. But in this case, we aren't using them. So we can go ahead and remove, this basically is going to remove the input override. And we do that for all four of the inputs. All right, and then that should, you know, one more. Oh, this is one I'm actually not correcting. So this attribute not found on material is this sprite renderer down here. And what it's saying is that the material you have in the material slot um, does not have this variable to bind. So I'm not changing this. Uh, I don't see a need to change it. It's a warning message. It's probably okay. But what it basically means is this particular material um, isn't, isn't exposing this variable. So we're going to leave that one alone. So those will maintain. Um, the, this is another, so, and you can see them here with the warning symbols. So here's the initialized particle warning. And here is the material warning. So as you go through initialize particle, use the recommended fix. That creates the new particle. But of course, the new particle carries forward the exposed inputs, which we need to fix. And you're left with the one error or one warning message oops, on the sprite renderer. And you just go ahead and complete that for all of the other ones. All right, so in the shooter gym map, we're going to uh, make sure our log is clear. It's clear. Now when we spawn in, we no longer we no longer receive the error message on the FX. So that error message has been removed and we're okay to keep uh, fixing errors. All right, so that's good. That one fixed the FX message. All right, and in looking through the content folder, there are four uh, Niagara system impact particle systems. And if we open all four of those um, and hover over the emitters, you'll see that they have the same missing fixed bounds warning message. Um, and so there is one other message 
I think it's this one. Yeah, that's about the uh, attribute binding not found in the material. So other than that one, we're going to go through all four of these and we're going to do the fixed bounds fix. So we're going to select this one and you'll see that it has that warning message here. And we're going to set fixed bounds to the emitter. And we're going to do that for each of these. So I'm going to go through all four emitters and fix the bounds on any of the ones that are using the GPU thread. So there's another one on the weapon fire muzzle. This one here. So we can fix those bounds. As I was going through fixing the rest of the systems, um, I noticed that the lines in this electric movement actually has uh, two errors. So it has the one we've been addressing, which is the uh, GPU target and the dynamic bounds. We make that fixed. But this one has another error. And if you scroll down, you'll see that error here in that there's an unmet dependency. And so the anytime you are changing things, you have to solve your force and velocity again. So this is a, a node which you can add to your uh, to your emitter. So it's, uh, let's see, we're going to see right here. We're going to fix this issue. And you see right here that it added this module for solve forces and velocity and the error went away. We run into another warning message on our footsteps and in the sparks and dust, uh, we have our fixed bounds, but we also have this uh, incorrectly running particle update script, uh, which you can read here. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and fix this and do some play testing to see if I probably shouldn't. Um, you should probably have back up all of your Niagara systems before uh, before making all these changes, but basically uh, we're just trying to remove the warnings and errors. So we're going to go to fix space, which removes the first error, and then we're going to hit this uh, emitter not to not run the particle update script. So if you look here, you'll see that this emitter changed slightly.